I wanted to give you one more example of something in circuits that uh, may cause students some challenges, and that is a potential divider. Uh, that's part of the um, physics syllabus for the SL, well, it's for the core, so HLs also have to do it. And uh, this is actually really important because uh, it's kind of neat. Uh, you can use this um, in a circuit where you have a sensor. So maybe you want to tell, you know, you want the light to turn on if it gets too dark. Or maybe you want an alarm to happen if the temperature gets too warm. These kind of things can be done uh, quite simply with a potential divider. So the type of circuit that we might want to draw for potential divider, it'll look like this. So let's say um, I'm going to draw a terminal, so some sort of battery here. And I'm going to draw two resistors. So there's, let's say we'll call it R1. And I'm going to draw another resistor called R2. Okay, those are my two resistors. And then away I go, then it just goes back here, like this. So, I mean, of course, I could put ammeters around, but I just want to keep this simple. This will be my voltage, but I'm going to call it in. Now, the idea here is that this one right here would be a, um, let's say it's a, we call that a sensor. So in this case, it's something where the resistance changes depending on some situation. So for example, this could be what we call a thermistor, which is, uh, it's kind of a neat name because it's like a thermal resistor. So that tells you right there, it's a resistor whose, well, its resistance changes depending on the temperature. So the hotter it gets, you know, the, the different, its resistance will be different uh, depending on the temperature. You could also have one called an LDR, or a light uh, dependent resistor. So that's also a type of sensor. So there, its resistance is different depending on how bright it is. So those are often uh, what you could put, for example, on top of a street lamp. You know, um, if you want the lights to automatically come on on your street when it's dark, well, rather than have someone actually, you know, flipping a switch or something like that, it's really simple. The lights can tell themselves when it's getting too dark and then they turn on their lights. Um, I remember when I was a kid, uh, this is maybe a little bit silly, but I used to think that there were people who were sitting underneath each of the lights and who actually would then turn on the lights, um, which I thought was, well, that's quite ridiculous now when I think of it. I remember then I thought I was quite clever though because I, I even decided, well, I know how these people will even get to work. And I thought, this must be the worst job ever. Because there has to be a lot of these people, right? There's a lot of lights. And so I used to think that the manhole covers, you know, that you use, you know, for storm drains, I used to think that's how they got into work. Uh, it's quite ridiculous now when I think of it, but I think I was, what, like five, six years old. So, but I used to think that that's what happened. But no, we just put a resistor on uh, uh, this type of circuit here, put a little sensor uh, on top of the light, and away you go, it works. So this is a resistor whose resistance changes. This is what we call our sensor. Um, now what we're going to do then is passively, this is the active circuit so to speak, this is what's really going on. What we're going to do is just place a little voltmeter across this right here as well. Okay, and this is I'm going to call V out. So this is just a little voltmeter here. The main circuit though is still this thing right here happening. Okay, this voltmeter is just meant to be a sensor. It's just, uh, it's just detecting things. It's not, uh, you know, you, you basically don't want too much of this, the current actually going through it. You don't want too much actually going through. You want to just measure the voltage across this or the potential difference across this. That's all we need. The rest of it then is just uh, a matter of looking at circuits and how they work. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write down, well, what is the current in the whole circuit? The current in the whole circuit, well, in other words, it's just like V equals IR, right? I mean, I don't know if you remember that, but that's Ohm's law. So I want I, so I is equal to V over R, except I don't just have one resistor, I have two of them. And these are in series with each other. So that means, and I can say that I equals V, and I'm going to label it properly, so V in, Divide that by, um, in this case right here, we'll have to add up the two resistance values. So R1 plus R2. This is going to be the first part here. So that's the current in the entire circuit. Now, um, we can also look at just what's going on right here. Because I'd like to just sort of zoom in on this little piece. So let's look at what the current is here. 
Uh, so now what we can do then is say, well, the current here, because some of the electricity will flow through this right here, right? So then I can say, well, the current is just going to be V out, and it's going to be just divide that by R2, because again, it's like the voltage across this, the, right? The voltage that's detected across this right here is going to be, uh, well, I'm just labeling that V out. It could have been anything. But the voltage across this is just going to be the current times the resistance, right? In other words, again, voltage is current times resistance. But if I want the current, I just say voltage over resistance. So it's going to be the voltage over the resistance. There it is. Right? Because it's going to be a different voltage across this one than there is here. Remember, because this voltage plus this voltage has to add up to that one. So I've got the voltage in this little piece right here that I'm looking at, this V out. Now, the neat thing is that, well, because the currents are the same, then I can actually set those two equations equal to each other. So I have V in uh, over R1 plus R2 is going to equal V out over R2. Now the goal, the reason why we do this is we want to find out what V out is. In other words, what's going to be the voltage across this sensor? So in this case, I want V out on its own. If I want V out on its own, that means I have to take this R2 and move it over here. So it's going to be R2 over R1 plus R2. All that times V in. This, in my opinion, is really important. Exam questions sometimes actually ask this. And this is something that might cause students a lot of pain or a lot of uh, trouble at least. Now again, remember, I haven't shown you everything from uh, this topic, but these are certainly the things that I think uh, show up most often on exams and what are the sort of key things in order to uh, succeed. So this one right here, maybe you want to just memorize it or maybe you just want to learn how to come up with it yourself. That's okay. Either way is fine because it should be logical to get there. Yeah, but this uh, potential dividers are really important because we use those with sensors.